I'm starting to record this morning at 9.15 a.m. on the 18th of September. Welcome to Joey on the Care Weather Dude YouTube channel. Today we're looking at uh, just a revisit of some of those rainfall totals. we got some clear pictures on who's going to get the heavy rain in the prairies especially. And then we're starting to get a, starting to get a better idea about British Columbia and this sort of atmospheric river-like uh, thing coming towards us. It's going to happen, right? So I don't think anyone else has been using that language yet. But uh, I would look at it across... Uh, the behavior, to me, it really seems like we are heading into some sort of a, uh, AR pattern. I think this is, gives us a good hint for what we could expect this fall, right? So what kind of winter are we in for? I mean, Mark Ingalls was talking about it. Everyone's talking about La Nina. What, what kind of winter are we in for? You know, there's a good, good chance that we got an active storm track coming into BC this winter. We're going to have a, a real, real, wintery like winter. Okay, well, this is bad news, show. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything can happen. Get on! Wow. I'll watch the video later. Feel the heat. Okay, butterflyeffectcommunications.ca, that's the sponsor of uh, today's forecast. They have this thing they've put out to you uh, called Footage Fridays, right? That's for people in camps in, uh, Kamloops, Thompson, Nicola, Caribou. So these people have video and audio equipment, and they want to get more practice using it by capturing videos and photos and audio, and they want to have a purpose for doing it, so they want to do it for you. So every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, they will release their limited deals for the week exclusively for subscribers of the newsletter, LinkedIn, and YouTube channels. You receive what they capture. Subscribe now for access and watch for limited time specials, including the caribou. Uh, it's at butterflyeffectcommunications.ca. Thank you for the sponsorship, and thank you to everybody out there who does help in one way or another you know, uh, some people throw five bucks a month in, some people are part of the Patreon, some people send things directly to me, uh, but it really, really makes a difference. So as you might have noticed, I got better sounding audio right now. We're just going to have a look at this quickly. This is my new audio interface I'm still trying to use and learn how to get better at. So basically what it is, is a soundboard and that soundboard effectively helps me have a microphone here that I can control and have better quality audio and it's for the podcast and um, something that every every YouTuber and podcaster has, some sort of an audio interface. Well, it's about time that I got with the picture to try to get better sounding audio as well on the channel. So thanks, everybody, for helping me with the upgrades once again. It costs money to make, make a channel. Let's have a look at Planet Canada. Planet Canada here. Uh, it was still active burning up there. So, you know, when I said fire season's over, I did kind of mean for British Columbia. Nonetheless, uh, smoke... Air quality advisory right now and fog advisory going on up in the north, right? So it's, it's smoky up there. Heavy smoke conditions, people impacted, children, pregnant people, things like that. Pregnant children, you know. So we have 40 to 60 millimeters today expected by tomorrow morning. This is issued at 416 a.m. So it's a reissue of the rainfall warning for down there in Manitoba. This is really the big story in Canada today, right? So big corner of Manitoba uh, expecting southwestern... Or, did I say Manitoba? What the... Hell is wrong with me? Okay, uh, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, right there. Persistent rain can expect to continue in Saskatchewan. 40, 60 millimeters by tomorrow morning. Higher amounts near the uh, Cypress Hills. We could see some convective, some convective cells pop up that may have localized rain in them, right? So that's what we're kind of looking forward to. And then uh, what do we got over here in Winnipeg this morning? Okay, fog advisory. So it's not just foggy here in Wells. Other places are foggy as well. Some of that fog would be associated with some of the crazy rainfall that just came through there. It's really soaked everything out. So up in Elma, down in Elma, 205.2 millimeters measured there. Wow, 167, 155 at Steinbach, uh, Steinbach Winkler, 133, Windy Gates, 113. So you get the uh, picture, then uh, lower, lower, lower as we go on down there. And uh, Navigation Canada stations got even 73.6 and more. Uh, also, Edmonton, the temperature values. Look at some of these temperature values. Man, 30 degrees Celsius. I mean, pretty warm there. Uh, that's uh, You know what? 30 degrees is pretty warm for New Brunswick in the middle of the summer. Hot days out there, including uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, 21 degrees in Churchill. Nova Scotia, seeing 29.8, almost 30 in uh, Inganish. Prince Edward Island seeing some 27s up there, 29 in Summerside, so been pretty warm out there. Uh, Quebec seeing new temperature records broken, 28.6, so all that warm weather we had in BC and Alberta uh, has now been pushed over to the east, 
and it's over for us. Okay, rainfall accumulations. Here's one thing that has changed a little bit in uh, our sort of expected model. So the low is kind of developing more or less what we expected it to, but um, for Montana, they're getting a little bit luckier. They're not getting the intense rain that maybe we thought they're gonna get, although this is still some pretty high numbers, right? We're seeing still somewhere in here is a 90, right? 90 mils, so uh, quite possible. Um, here's where the rainfall warnings are. 60 to 80 is what the Environment Canada is saying. Of course, down here by the Cypress Hills, you might have some areas that take a bit more rain. That's not really showing on the modeling, but you can expect this over the next bunch of days, up, you know, starting today, overnight tonight, up into Saskatoon. Some of these places in Manitoba in the following days are going to get some of this rainfall too. So we're looking at some pretty heavy rain totals right uh right west of well through Winnipeg, lake winnipeg and some of these places right so into the lake country there in manitoba and uh, most people don't realize how many lakes there are in manitoba it's a very lakey place over 100 mils expected there so that's some big time precipitation for you guys uh look out and that could even uh, extend further maybe a little less rain but up to god's lake narrows and if you go up to the far far north uh, looking again at some of these uh, larger numbers, almost uh, you know 80 mils kind of thing in the next bunch of days. Of course, we'll expect some of these this rainfall warning to get to move. You know, once it's done in this area, they will probably start issuing some for some of these regions. Here's where a lot of our fires have been so far: Manitoba or Saskatchewan. Did I just say Manitoba? What's wrong with me? Okay, Flint Flon from Cold Lake, from Flint Flon, Manitoba to Cold Lake, Alberta. You go jump up to Sandy Lake. This is more or less the triangle of fire that's been going on there. So as you can see, even that area is going to be taking some some pretty good rain, some significant rain. That's going to help um, in some of these places, at least in that eastern section of Saskatchewan, most likely going to really drench those fires out. And we're going to see kind of an end of the season, I think, at some point sooner than later. So what we're looking at for BC, now here is what I'm talking about. This is the atmospheric river, Majiggy. So, we, you know, we're going to go right to the end of the month. And just get a picture of this active storm track but as you can see i mean this isn't going to be exact right i mean we're we don't we're not usually in the business here of looking nine ten days out too much on the channel but this just gives you an example you look from japan all the way across we got this large swath of the pacific ocean that is taking heavy 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 rain right and you know we're most concerned about the next one coming uh some of the changes in projections when we made the video on Monday, Vancouver Island was featured a lot more on where they thought rainfall was going to be. Please don't message me right now. I'm trying to make a forecast video. It's still going to bring a lot of rain into the interior, right? Maybe less so for some places. Like I'm sure if you are down in the typically dry places, you know, you're not going to see down Kamloops and Cologne. You're not going to see massive, massive rainfalls. Uh, certainly in my neck of the woods, I expect to see some pretty significant rains between now and the end of the month for sure right but uh it's all on this coastal trend uh trend this coastal trend is looking at getting some humongous numbers up to 400 millimeters in places maybe even right so 350 380 394 yeah uh, maybe up to 400 mils up there somewhere i mean that's what the coast does the coast likes to rain fall it's a rainforest right so it's gonna be rainy on the rainforest uh ta-da and this should bring the first significant bunch of snowfall into the north coast mountains as well right so we're looking at especially for our friends over in alaska uh looking at some big time numbers for you uh 342 centimeters of snow falling up there okay that's that's not only a little bit of snow uh, if you go to the BC side, maybe we're not seeing quite those same values in the big, big mountains. But some of those big mountains are going to be taking it pretty good. Going to be taking it pretty good uh, on the areas around Telegraph Creek and whatnot. You can expect to see snowfall coming in your mountains right now. So maybe not in Telegraph Creek itself. Of course, you're lower elevation. But you're going to be looking up soon and seeing your mountaintops looking pretty white. You're going to be looking pretty white up there and along the BC Alaska border. Some big time snow up there. So I mean, Coast Mountains. This is what you expect up there. Expect the rainforest to be rainforest. You expect the north to be snowy. So we're seeing a real change into the fall pattern, right? That's great. Great news. My face has been here the whole time. Damn it. I don't like my face in the way. Ah, so here's where we started this morning so far over in Saskatchewan. Climax is getting, uh, it's coming towards you, Climax. Uh, East End getting heavy rain, Shonovan. So looking good looking returns on the radar right there. So uh, solid, maybe 40, 45 DBZ. So solid rainfall is in there. Heading up uh, towards Gull Lake, getting some of that rain, Weimark and Dunelm and places like that. A little bit of a thunderstorm looking poppy thing going on at Etsicom. Uh, coming towards Many Berries, Alberta on that side of the border. So that's more or less what we got this morning. Looking at 
some of these being thunderstormy today. Uh, maybe even that getting over towards Brandon, Manitoba. So uh, look it out. Yeah, you could see some some strong thunderstorm action. This is good looking low, and we'll just watch what it does. And we'll finally head over to BC after this and have a check in on our storm in BC. Pretty good idea. Some of those heavy rainfall totals. You can just see how that that eye of that storm is really it's pulling in that cold air from the north and wrap it around. You can see that nice clear slot of warmer air from the south, right? So boom, and you can see how it's how it's really doing its thing there, the mid-latitude cyclone-wise, right? And look at the number of thunderstorms that'll be popping out. So again, another good round possible for that northern Ontario, maybe not like you had last time, but pretty good round nonetheless. So here's what we're watching is that that is the cell, that is the storm. Meanwhile, over in BC, while well, that keeps playing out and heading up north northeast, uh, BC starting to see some of that snowfall up in yeah, this, uh, Yukon, blah, blah, blah. Here comes that big storm off the coast, and it's dragging a humongous tail in behind it, uh, stretching right across the ocean, right? So more or less right to Japan is this line of, of precipitable moisture, of uh, available moisture that this thing can pull on, draw from. And we got active track, so it's like one, two, three. Okay, well, we've seen this kind of thing often, and we know generally when we start seeing uh, one, two, three pull up, and moving on this, I mean, look at how this high pressure uh, is just feeding this, right? So high pressure goes clockwise. So this anti-cyclone is giving this storm track nowhere else to go, really. Like, it can't go south, right, as much as it would like to. So it's it's really forced to stick along this bend. And what it also does is narrow that moisture to one sort of locale, which is this this so if this storm stalls out in places which we know it's going to do up here by surf inlet and things like that it's going to just keep dumping massive amounts of rainfall there right so this storm moving up towards uh well you know mostly the yukon stop messaging me i'm trying to work You're up to the yukon border and uh, it's actually my probably my friend who's probably leaving camly he's coming up to visit so maybe i shouldn't um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult being me, you know, it's like when you're a small C celebrity, you don't get uh, all the good things about being a celebrity, like, you know, the cars and the women and, the, you know, the guns and, and all the fun. At the ready for every moment of the day, my phone rings nonstop, ding, 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 so, so, you know, small C celebrity when you, you're the celebrity, but you don't get any of the good things that go along with being a celebrity, right? So that's, that's cool. I'm used to that. And welcome to Joey Only Care Be With Your Dude channel. I am your host. Small C celebrity. So rainfall coming Saturday is when we should start seeing that picking up, right? And we go look at that. It's Vancouver Island getting some of that. It's going to move into the Caribou. We're going to move into the Chilcote. And so it's looking like, um, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see this. Brandon DS, he's out in Bowerham Chain right now. Stop by the other night. And it was very nice of them to stop in. And look at this storm pulling out. 968 Whopper. Whopper. So this is the all thing to be watching for next week. So Brandon and his dad, they stopped in and they wanted a first-hand weather forecast and they brought me a really wonderful steak. Like, you know, I'm poor enough that when I buy a steak, it's not too often I'm getting the triple the A nice grade. I mean, this thing was wicked. So here we're looking at um, basically hurricane strength storm going up the Aleutian Islands. And see this tail now. Really pulling across. I mean, that's atmospheric river, if you ask me. So no one said it yet, but I'm saying it. Atmospheric river coming to British Columbia right now. So that's that's today's big revelation. The 973 low. I mean, that's lower than the hurricane that just hit down in Louisiana was, right? You know, you got these mid-latitude cyclones can be very, very powerful storms, right? Don't fool yourself. Then we got that active storm track really looking to slam. I mean, these are the areas that were getting slammed the most last year, too. And we got another one right after that. So active storm track going on. Going to be active storm track. Well, this gives us a really good hint as to what kind of fall we're going to see, what kind of winter. Are we going to have a big snow year in BC? I fucking think so. I really think that we're heading into that. You know, we've... we've weathered out a couple El Nino years that were particularly dry. I mean, no one ever seen anything like this in Wells. And now we got storms coming in, bringing atmospheric rivers that are hurricane strength lows. So strong lows coming up. And uh, you know, I mean, look at the, the gradient on these wind fields. Let's just have a, have a guess. What kind of wind is that? What kind of wind are we talking about, Joey? 110 kilometers an hour, 124. Holy shit balls. Okay, so hurricane strength winds. Hurricane strength winds in that big old bugger. You know, that's looking far out, so we don't know exactly where it's going to go, what it's going to do, but we got a pretty good picture. We know the first storm's probably going to hit mid-coast uh, this weekend. We know there's another one after that that may stick more up into 
Alaska, Pan Alaska and Aleutian Islands, but we got this next one coming after that that could be particularly low, particularly powerful. And if that if this happens the way it looks like, Haida Gwaii is going to lose all its trees. They're going to get blown away. The, the trees from Haida Gwaii, they'll find, by the looks of it, over at uh, Kitimat or somewhere. Lots of snow coming from northern BC. Lots of rainfall coming to the coast. Fire season is over, like I said it would. So a uh, mid-latitude cyclone in the prairies is going to be drawing a lot of warm air still up into northern Ontario and things like that. So that's one thing to look for. Some of the warmer weather this week will be in northern Ontario and then moving over to eastern Ontario more. So you just broke some records, expect to break some more. Okay, so BC cooling off for sure, especially you go look up into the Yukon, go look into, so I mean, there's a big mountain range here, Mackenzie Mountains and whatnot. So, like, you know, of course it's gonna be cold up in the mountains, but this gives give you an idea that we got some of that winter. That's at four in the afternoon or whatever, right? This isn't like, this isn't at four in the morning. So yeah, cold air sitting in the mountains, even in the middle of the day, freezing in the middle of the day. So that's, that's changed. That's something we haven't seen so far yet today. And just looking forward, going out, Seeing that larger cool down across all Canada, and uh, you know, get your get your enjoy when you get your moments. Like say next Tuesday might give us a few moments of warmer weather in the prairies. I think I've already said way too much this episode, so I think that's it for me today. I think uh, we'll try that and make sure. Hopefully, the microphone sounds good. Hopefully, it all worked out. So thanks to all of the sponsors, uh, Butterfly Effect Communications. Thanks to you Patreon members, all the supporters, all the members of the channel, everyone who throws just one dollar a day. I mean, I got thirty eight thousand people following. Uh, on interior weather and wilderness watches if if those 38,000 people put a dollar uh a year in suddenly i could just do this only so i mean i'm not acting for for crazy things you know i, I just like to keep doing weather and keep getting by and keep upgrading and keep getting better and better and better at this and the better i get the more value i have as a content creator i just want to be a creator i love being creative it's what i do right trying to work a normal job and if it's not like if something's not on fire and i'm trying to work a normal job i'm like God, you know, it's, wow, Joey, how'd you, you went 50 months now and you're not an alcoholic no more. I don't believe that. I don't believe in this A nonsense. Uh, uh, you're always an alcoholic. No, not me. I stopped being an alcoholic. Fuck that. I'm done with it. Right. 50 months of it. Well, that's the number one way that you've managed to keep sober. Well, mostly I've just done what I love doing. Even if it's financially hard on me. I've stopped hating my life and wanting to fucking die every day and getting up and doing the things I love. That's what I'm doing right here on the channel. Joey on the camera with a dude. We'll see you next time, everybody. Hit like, share, subscribe. Bye.